Hey everyone, Scott Willard here. The topic today is going to be what I consider to be the most important shot in pool. And before I give that answer away, let me go ahead and run through some examples here in the rack and see what you think. So do you think it's this shot, a nice simple cut? Or maybe this shot, a lawn cut? Or maybe this, a lawn draw. Or a simple rolling ball shot. Maybe this extreme spin shot. Or maybe one of these shots to finish the game up. How about specialty shots? Bank. Kick shot. Nice safety. Jump. Or even a game winning Massé. So if you haven't guessed by now, in my opinion, the most important shot in pool is this shot right here, the elusive straight in shot. Now this particular shot wouldn't give most of us too many issues, but what about this shot? Same line, but I bet a lot of you wouldn't be too happy shooting this one. The key is if you can make this shot consistently, then you can make this one, or this one, or even this one. In my opinion, the most important shot in pool is a straight in shot. Uh, it also tends to be one of the most feared shots, especially among beginners and intermediates, and even some better players. So, so why is that? I have a couple of theories on that and let me, let me go over them. First of all, I think most of my students and league players I've observed throughout the years, they can typically aim the shot properly. Most people can visualize a circular object kind of matching up to another circular object and then pointing to kind of that straight line from there uh, to the pocket. That's usually not an issue. Now, their alignment and their ability to get down on the shot is a whole other issue and we're going to talk about that in part two of this video. But the aim itself is usually not a problem. It's also a shot that's perceived as being easy. Um, and it is in some ways easy. You can aim the shot fairly well. You can, you should, you feel you should be able to get down on the shot fairly well and execute the shot, you know, 100 out of 100. Uh, that's not really the case but that's what the perception is. Um, also, when you're shooting a straight in shot, you're taking away a, a lot of possible causes for misses on the pool table. There is no collision induced throw because you're not cutting the ball. Um, assuming you hit in the center of the cue ball, there's no spin induced throw. And again, short of there being some debris on the table or something like that, that, that brings the ball offline. When you shoot a straight in shot, if you can aim it straight and you can shoot it down that line, it, it appears as if it's an easy shot and you should make it every single time. I think because of those perceptions, we, and I include myself in this as well, we feel worse about ourselves, about our game, when we miss a straight in shot. Uh, we almost really don't miss straight in shots when they're fairly close, like the first example I showed, but when they're farther away, we certainly miss straight in shots and, and I think even the pros will miss them every once in a while. Although less often again, because of the sound fundamentals and the amount of time they put at the table, confidence, etc. But we feel it, it, it sort of makes us feel really bad about ourselves when we miss a straight in shot or an easy shot even. And it sort of exposes 
flaws in our game. So, uh, you know, a pool and a lot of activities we do are very ego driven. And you have to have some degree of confidence in order to play a pool and other sports well. Uh, sometimes even it borders on arrogance and sometimes it goes over that line to arrogance for some players. But you certainly have to have at least a quiet confidence about yourself. You can't be standing over a shot and get down to shoot the shot and be worried about all the previous times you've missed the shots or be thinking about what the consequences are for missing that shot. I've done it. Everyone I know does it. That's part of the mental hurdle to get over. But again, when we miss a cut shot, even if it's a very slight cut shot, a couple of degrees, we have an excuse, right? We have a built-in excuse that says we aimed incorrectly. Don't ever want to admit that we stroked the ball incorrectly or that we didn't align to our shot line properly from a standing position. It, we can always blame it on the aim or some aspect of the cut itself. You know, again, cut induced throw, uh, there was a little piece of chalk on the ball that grabbed it and threw it a little more, you know, whatever. There's always a built-in excuse there. So I think all those things I mentioned actually raise our level of nervousness or anxiety over straight-in shots, especially longer, middle to longer range straight-in shots, and therefore causes even more misses. Because when that anxiety creeps in, then our conscious brain starts chattering and things get tense in our arm and we start flinching and steering and twisting and poking and all those things happen. So I think it's kind of a landslide of, of things that cause even more anxiety over the straight in shots. There's just all those expectations about making them. We feel that anybody watching us is going to expect us to make it. When we don't, we feel we let ourselves down. We feel other people are going to judge us for missing such an easy shot, blah, blah, blah. It just keeps going on and on. So the final thing I have to say about this is because of all those factors, the ease of aim, the perception of the shot being easy, and the negatives that come along with missing the shot, people don't practice straight in shots. So therefore, when they're working on something new in their game, they're trying to shorten their bridge or trying to a new grip, uh, they're modifying their stance, they tend to just practice with their friends and they do it kind of one shot at a time, or they throw the balls onto the table and start cutting balls and banking balls and doing all these things. And really, you have to be able to get back down to the baseline. And to me, the baseline is a straight in shot. And I'm going to go over that later on in the video as well, so that I can show you a bunch of drills you can do to really hone in and isolate on the straight in shot. And in turn, it will really help you hone in and isolate flaws that might exist in your game. So there's a couple of components of the straight in shot that I want to talk about as well that I think are important to success of making a shot and also contribute to some of the difficulty of what we perceive as an easy shot. So the first component that I wanna talk about is distance. So when the object ball is close to the pocket, if you can picture, there, there's sort of a, there's a margin for error, right? You can hit this into the left side of the pocket or the right side of the pocket. And even on a diamond table like this, it's fairly tight. The, the pockets are roughly two balls wide, okay? So the closer the object ball is to the pocket, the more margin for error we have in hitting the shot. As the object ball gets farther and farther from the pocket, that margin for error shrinks because that V starts to widen and widen and widen as it goes out. So that's something to keep in mind. When the ball is close to the pocket, it's not so bad. When that object ball is three, four, five, six diamonds away, it's more, you have to be more accurate. You have to hit the ball more precisely in order to make it. Now you would think that the farther away the ball is, the more difficult the shot is. However, the other component of distance is the distance from the cue ball to the object ball. So again, in order to hit the ball as accurately as possible, the closer the cue ball is to the object ball, the more accurately we can hit it. So typically as the object ball go, goes farther away from the pocket, the cue ball is going to, it can't be any farther away than a total of roughly, you know, eight feet on a nine foot table. So if this ball is close to the pocket, the cue ball could be all the way at the end of the table, which would leave me roughly an eight, eight and a half foot shot, let's say. So if you're hitting that shot, it would seem like that would be a very difficult shot. However, the object ball is very close to the pocket, so I can hit this 
in a wide range of areas on the back of the ball and still catch the pocket. Of course, I have to worry about scratching and there's other ways around that as well. But, and just to mention, a simple thing would be to hit the ball slightly right or slightly left and the cue ball would then follow down to this rail or that rail. Or if it's really deep in the jaws, you could also come off rail first and hit the ball. So at, let's say the ball is two feet away from the pocket. Now the most the cue ball could be would be frozen to the rail up there, which would be a very difficult shot. Um, but as this ball gets more toward the middle of the table, right, the cue ball can only be three to four feet away. It can't be seven or eight feet away, otherwise that would be a very difficult shot. So in my opinion, when you have a long shot on the ball, something like this, that's actually not horrible because you're so close to the object ball, you can hit it very precisely. So even though you have a long distance to go and you aim, the hit on the ball has to be accurate, you can hit it accurately because you're very close to the ball. So in my opinion, the toughest shot you can have would be when the ball is roughly in the middle of the table and the cue ball is roughly here. So now you have the maximum of both distances that you can get. You have four feet between the object ball and the pocket and four feet between the cue ball and the object ball. Anything that you move in any different way is going to make the shot just a little bit easier, either because of the distance to the pocket or the distance to the object ball. So that's the first component. The second component of this is going to be uh, pocket perception. And I see a lot of uh, students that I work with have an issue with this. And when you explain this to them, it kind of opens up their, their eyes a little bit. So I think many people aim to them when they aim their shots, however you aim, whether it's, you know, fractional ghost ball contact point, whatever, when you're visualizing the shot and you're about to shoot it, people somehow inherently aim to this middle of the hole of the pocket, which makes sense. It's kind of like golf, right? If you're, if you're putting a ball, you've got this hole that you're putting to. So people have that same perception and pull that they're aiming to this hole in the pocket. Well, the problem is these points come into play at various angles. The only time that you have a straight in shot on a pool table with maximum use of the pocket is from the spots. So from this location right here, that is set up at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so if you can see that is directly into the pocket. Most people perceive that when the ball is coming from the middle of the table, it's into the center of the pocket. something like that. And that's just not true. You're actually hitting to slightly less than a full pocket from here. So one of the things I like to do is to put a hole reinforcement sticker. Uh, you can also mark it with a piece of chalk or whatever, but put it right between the points of the pocket. And you can see mine right here. That marks the true center of the pocket. And that marks where you are trying to roll the object ball over. So you have to kind of think about that. When you're shooting this from the middle of the table, you can't aim toward the middle of this hole right here. It has to be slightly to this side, kind of coming over where the sticker is. As this ball gets closer and closer to the rail, something like this, again, you're not aiming toward this hole. You're aiming kind of over here. So it rolls over where that sticker is roughly. So a lot of people will sort of aim between this crease uh, from the rail to the pocket, and it'll come down that way and kind of bounce off the bottom side of this angled portion of the rail and then bounce into the hole. Now on an easy table, you can get away with coming down here, hitting in the rail and kind of playing bumper pool and coming off here and going in. And at slower speeds, or again, on an easy table, that'll work. But on a tighter table or a table with worn in cloth, that's not going to work. So you really don't, especially if you're hitting the ball hard, you really don't want to touch this rail on the way into the pocket. It's got to hit off this rail and not too high, because if it hits too high, it'll bounce across and bobble as well. So roughly about halfway in, depending how deep the shelf is, is your target. 
If you visualize that spot between the points, you'll always be good. So the most extreme would be a shot like this, where you're coming down the rail. And as you can see by the sticker, hopefully you can see that, if you aimed for the center of the hole, which is right here, this point looms pretty large. Matter of fact, you're probably gonna hit the rail somewhere up in here. And again, on a bar table, you might get away with it and bounce off, but on a tight table, you're not. So you have to aim over this, which means the ball is gonna come down the rail like this and go right over where that sticker is, hit off this rail and then drop in the pocket. You don't wanna aim for this pocket and start coming down like this, catching the rail like right here as it's going toward my finger because you can see all this rail gets brought into play. So I think those two factors are very important uh, when thinking about straight in shots. So again, don't overthink it, don't psych yourself up before you shoot the shot, but definitely be aware of the distance factor, cue ball to pot, uh, sorry, object ball to pocket and cue ball to object ball. And also be aware of your perception of the center of the pocket and make sure you're aiming for the proper portion of the pocket on your shots. And that'll go a long way to helping you make all of your shots more accurately, not just straight in shots. All right, so that concludes the video for part one. In part two, I'm going to cover the three major components of the shot, which is going to be aim, alignment, and stroke. And with those three components, we're gonna go into detail on what you need to focus on and what can go wrong, typical flaws that people have in those areas, and how to recognize and diagnose those flaws for yourself. So thank you very much, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in part two.